I waited and watched carefully for some days. The children were so lovable and happy that I nearly forgot my worries sometimes. They enjoyed studying and were clever and funny in our lessons together. Sometimes they seemed to have a plan, one of them talked to me, while the other disappeared outside. But this did not really worry me. Then, one evening, I stayed up very late in my bedroom. I was reading a book by the light of a candle. Flora was asleep in her little bed in the corner. Suddenly, I looked up and listened. Something was moving in the house. I remembered my first night when I heard sounds like this. I took my candle and left the room. I locked the door behind me and walked to the top of the stairs. My candle went out, but I noticed that it was already quite light and I could see without it. I realized that there was someone on the stairs below. It was Peter Quint again. There was a big window by the stairs. He stood by it and stared up at me. I knew then that he was both wicked and dangerous. But I was not afraid. We stood and stared silently, and that was the strangest thing. A murderer can talk, but a ghost cannot. Then he turned and disappeared at the bottom of the stairs. I returned to my room. A candle was still burning there, and I saw that Flora's bed was empty. I ran to her bed, frightened. Then I heard a sound. She was hiding by the window. She looked very serious. You naughty person. Where did you go? I sat down, and she climbed onto my knee. Were you looking for me out of the window? I asked her. Did you think I was in the garden? Well, someone was out there she said, and smiled at me. Her face was innocent and beautiful in the candlelight. And did you see anybody? Oh, no. I knew that she was lying. But I did not say anything. Each night now I sat up late. Sometimes I went out of my room to look and listen. Once I saw a woman on the stairs. She sat there in sadness, with her head in her hands. She did not show me her face, but I knew that it was dreadful and that she was suffering. I only saw her for a second, and then she disappeared. After eleven nights, I could not stay awake late and I went to sleep quite early. I woke up at about one o'clock in the morning. Flora was standing by the window, staring out. She did not notice me. There was a full moon, and I could see her face in its light. She was giving herself to something out there, to the ghost that we saw by the lake. I got up, I wanted to find another room with windows that looked out onto the garden. The room in the tower was the best one. It was a big, cold bedroom, nobody ever slept there. I put my face against the glass of the window. The garden was very bright in the moonlight. Somebody was standing on the grass and staring up above me at the tower. So there was another person out there, on the roof of the tower. But the person in the garden was not the ghost of a woman. It was little Miles. 
When I went down into the garden, Miles came in quietly with me, back to his bedroom. Tell me now, Miles, I said. Why did you go out? What were you doing in the garden? Will you understand? He asked me, with his wonderful smile. I felt almost sick while I waited to hear. He planned to tell me everything. Well, he said. I wanted to be bad. He kissed me. I didn't go to bed. I went out at midnight. When I'm bad, I'm really bad. He spoke like a naughty, happy child. I planned it with Flora. She stood at the window to wake you up. And you stood outside in the cold. Well, you must go to bed now. I was the governess again, and Miles was just a naughty boy. He was too clever for me. I told Mrs. Gross everything. We think that the children are good, but they're not. They live with them, not with us. They want to be with Quint and that woman. But why? Mrs. Gross asked. Because Peter Quint and Miss Jessel are wicked, and they taught Flora and Miles to love wickedness. They're bad. Yes, they were a wicked pair, Mrs. Gross said. But what can they do now? They're dead. They're still here. Their ghosts are looking for our children. They can still take Miles and Flora from us. Oh, my goodness. They wait in high, strange or dangerous places the roof of the tower, the other side of the lake. It's dangerous but exciting for Flora and Miles. They'll try to get to those wicked people. And a terrible accident can happen, I see, said Mrs. Gross. We must stop this. Their uncle must take them away from here. I can't write, so you must write to him. What can I say? How will he know that it's true? My employer will be angry with me, I thought. I wanted so much to be brave and to help him. Mrs. Gross took my arm. He must come, she said. He must come back and help us. Chapter 6 The summer changed into the autumn. I didn't see any more ghosts, and I did nothing. The sky was gray and dead leaves blew onto the grass. Did the children see things? Sometimes everything suddenly went quiet in the schoolroom. I think that wicked pair were with us then. I think, too, that the children could see them. But usually, they were happy and worked hard. They were very interested in their uncle. Will he come soon? They asked me. They wrote beautiful letters to him. We can't send them to him, I explained. He's too busy. Perhaps he'll come later in the year. I wanted to speak to the children about the ghosts, but I couldn't find a way. They stayed silent about them, and so did I. Sometimes, alone, I thought about it all night, but my thoughts stayed secret. Everything felt heavy, like a storm was coming. Then the storm came. 
I was walking to church one Sunday morning with Miles. Flora and Mrs. Groves were in front. It was bright, cold autumn weather now. Can you tell me, Miles said, when I'm going back to school? His voice was sweet, but the words surprised me. I stopped suddenly. He smiled at me. I'm a boy, you know. And I'm getting older now. I'm with a lady all the time, is it a good idea? She's a wonderful lady, of course, but a boy needs other boys and men. We walked on now. Were you happy at school? I asked him. He thought for a second. Oh, I'm happy enough anywhere. Then you must be happy here too. Yes, but I want, I want more interesting things to see and do. I see, I said. Does my uncle know about me, about everything? I don't think he's interested, Miles, I answered. Then he must come and visit us. Who will ask him? I will, Miles said. We were at the church now, but I did not go in. I stayed outside. For the first time, I did not want to be with Miles. Of course, he was right, it was unnatural for a boy to spend all his time with a governess every day. And I was doing nothing about it. Could I speak to his uncle? Miles knew now that I did not want to do this. He'll use it in his plan. I thought. He and Flora looked innocent, but they were not. I must leave this house. I'll go back and get ready. I can leave today. In the house, I went up to the schoolroom for my books. I opened the door. But there, sitting at my table, was that dreadful woman, Miss Jessel. She was writing, I knew it, to her lover, Quint. Her tired face was full of suffering. She was using my pen, my paper. She stood up, and for a few seconds she looked at me. I stared at her, then I screamed, You're a wicked, terrible woman. She seemed to hear me. But the next minute the room was empty. And I knew now that I must stay in the house. I could not leave. I've talked to Miss Jessel, I said to Mrs. Groves later, by the fire. Mrs. Groves was surprised, but she stayed calm. And what did she say? She's suffering. She wants Flora. I've decided to write to the children's uncle. Oh, yes. Mrs. Groves said. You must. I'll tell him this, I said. I cannot teach a boy who is wicked. The school have sent him home because of his wickedness. But we don't know yes, we do, I said. He seems to be so good that he must be wicked, really wicked. I'll write tonight. I began the letter that evening. There was a strong wind and heavy rain outside. But it was quiet in my room, and Flora was asleep in her little bed. I stood up, took my candle, and went to Miles's bedroom door. I listened. He called out, Come in. 
I can hear you outside. He was awake but in bed. Aren't you sleeping? I asked him. No, he answered, quite happily. I like to lie and think. What do you think about? About you, of course. And about all these strange things, what strange things? Oh, you know. I held his hand, and he smiled up at me. Of course you can go back to school, I said. But we must find a new one for you. He looked so young and innocent in his bed. You didn't say anything before, I continued. What do you really want? He shook his head. I want to go away. Oh, you know what a boy wants. Do I? You want to go to your uncle? I asked him. He must come here. Yes, but he'll take you away, Miles. That's what I want. You must tell him everything. Tell him what? I asked. He'll ask you questions. You must tell him things, too. What things? The things that you don't tell me. He must decide on his plans for you. You can't go back to your old school, you know. I looked at this brave, calm, young boy, and I kissed him with love. I'm writing to your uncle, I said. I've already started the letter. Well then, finish it. Tell me something first, Miles. What happened? He looked at me, surprised. What happened here in this house? What happened at school? He was still looking at me. I held my arms out to him. Oh, Miles. I said. Dear little Miles, I want to help you. I don't want to hurt you. I want to help you so much. But I knew at once that this was a mistake. Suddenly, there was a loud and terrible noise, a crash against the window. The cold wind blew into the room. Miles screamed. I jumped up. Everything was dark. The candle has gone out. I said. I blew it out, my dear, Miles said. Chapter 7 After the children's lessons the next day, Mrs. Groves asked me, Have you written the letter? Yes, I've written it. I did not tell her that it was still in my pocket. I had to send it, I knew that now. Later, I put it on the table by the front door. One of the servants will find it and take it to town, I thought. In the afternoon, Miles came to me. Shall I play some music for you? He asked. He knew that he was winning and that he was free now. He did not need to fight me. He could be friendly. The music was strange and beautiful. I was almost asleep. When it finished, I jumped up. Where's Flora? I asked. How do I know? Miles replied. He laughed and started to play again. I looked in my room, but Flora was not there. 
I went to Mrs. Groves. Mrs. Groves did not know where she was. Perhaps she's in one of the empty rooms, she said. I thought that she was with you. Usually, I stayed with Flora all the time. No, she's outside, somewhere quite far away, I answered. Mrs. Groves looked surprised. Without a hat, she asked. That woman that doesn't wear a hat. I said. She's with her. We must find them. Mrs. Groves did not move. And where is Miles? Oh, he's with Quint in the schoolroom. He stayed with me so that Flora could get away. He's free now. He can do what he likes. We stood by the front door. The afternoon was gray, and the grass was wet. You aren't wearing your outdoor clothes, Mrs. Gross said. It doesn't matter. Flora hasn't got outdoor clothes on either, I replied. I can't wait to dress. If you want to dress, you must stay behind. Look for Flora upstairs. And see him, was her frightened reply. She came outside with me at once. We walked quickly to the lake. I was sure that Flora was there. She wanted to go back there alone, I explained to Mrs. Gross. She and Miles planned this. And I'm sure that Miss Jessel is by the lake now. We arrived at the lake, but we could not see Flora. She's taken the boat, I said, and hidden it on the other side. We must walk round and find her. How could she do all that? She's only a little girl. No, sometimes she's an old, old woman, I said. And there's someone with her. You'll see. Ten minutes later, we arrived at the other side of the lake and found the boat there. But where was Flora? We went on, into the next field. There she is, we both said at the same time. Flora stood on the grass and smiled. She did not move or speak. She smiled and smiled in a dreadful, silent way. Mrs. Gross threw her arms round the child. Flora stared in surprise at my head, without its hat, and said, Where are your outdoor things? Where are yours? I asked her. And where's Miles? She asked. If you'll tell me, I'll tell you Dash there must be no secrets now. Tell you what? Tell me. My dear, where's Miss Jessel? Mrs. Groves gave a small scream. In the same second, I screamed too. I shook Mrs. Groves's arm and said, She's there, she's there. Miss Jessel stood on the other side of the lake. In a way, I was glad. It's all true, then, I thought. Mrs. Groves will be able to see everything, too. I pointed across the lake. Mrs. Groves looked, but Flora did not. She watched my face calmly and seriously. She's there, you poor unhappy child. You can see her very well. But Mrs. Groves was angry. What terrible things you say. Where can you see someone? 
There's nobody there. She could not see anything. And now I was losing everything. That wicked governess was winning. She's not there, Mrs. Gross continued, talking to Flora now. You can't see anyone. That poor lady, poor Miss Jessel's dead, we know that, don't we? It's all a mistake, and we're going home now, quickly. Flora was holding on to Mrs. Gross's dress. Her face was suddenly ugly. I can't see anybody. I never see anything. I don't like you. She turned towards Mrs. Gross. Take me away from her. From me? I asked. From you, from you. I stared at the ghost, which was still there. Then I shook my head and said sadly to Flora, I've lost you. I'm sorry. She's one. I tried to help you. Goodbye. And to Mrs. Gross I said, go. Go at once. I don't remember anything after that. I was on the ground, crying, for a very long time. It was nearly evening when I got up. I went back to the house and up to my room. Flora's things weren't there now. Later, Miles came and sat silently with me. He was not unfriendly. I was very cold, but felt warm when he was there. Chapter 8 Mrs. Gross came into my room the next morning. Flora was ill. What does she say? I asked. What has she seen? I can't ask her, Mrs. Gross said sadly. But she seems so old now. Does she talk about Miss Jessel? Not a word. They're so clever, that woman and Flora. Flora will never speak to me again. And she'll tell her uncle about me. What a terrible governess, he'll think. Shall I leave now? I continued. That's what Flora wants, isn't it? She agreed. She doesn't want to see you again. Well then, I said, you must go. You must take Flora away, to her uncle's. I'll stay here with Miles. But the two children must not meet alone together. Not for three seconds. Yes, you're right. Flora must leave this house. We'll go this morning. And I can't stay. Flora is saying such terrible things. Dreadful words, dreadful things. Where did she learn them? She was crying now. You believe me, then? I asked her. Oh, yes, I do. I must take Flora far away, far from them, she said. My letter, it will arrive in town first, I said. She shook her head. No, it won't. It's disappeared. What do you mean? It disappeared from the table by the front door. The other servants haven't seen it. Miles Miles took it. This was terrible. Then he's read it. 
So he's a thief, he was stealing letters at school, then. I must talk to him. If he talks to me, we can save him. The servants were surprised when Flora left with Mrs. Gross. They stared at me silently when I walked through the house. But Miles did not seem worried. We ate lunch together in the large dining room. Is Flora very ill? He asked me. She'll get better in London. Take some meat, Miles, I said. He filled his plate, and we ate quickly. Miles got up and stood with his back to me and his hands in his little pockets. We did not speak while the servant took the plates away. Well, Miles said, We're alone now. Not quite alone, I answered. Of course, there are the others, he said. But they're not important, are they? He walked to the window and put his face against the glass. Was he looking for something or somebody? Have you enjoyed yourself today? I asked. Oh, yes. I'm so free now. I walked miles and miles. I went everywhere. And do you like it? Do you? He replied. You are more alone now. It doesn't matter, I said. I'm happy to be here. And why am I still here? For you, of course. He stared at me, and his little face was both handsome and serious. You're staying here just for me? Yes. I'm your friend, and I want to help you. I told you so, that night, in your bedroom. Do you remember? Yes, but you wanted something from me, too. Yes. Tell me everything, Miles. That's what I want. Ah, oh, you're staying here so that I can tell you everything. Well, yes, it's true. Now, he asked. It's a good time. Or do you want to go out again? Yes, I want to go out very much. He picked up his hat and was ready to leave. I'll tell you everything, I promise. But later, not now. Why not now? He turned to the window again and was silent. I have to see the gardener, he said. He was lying, I knew it. Someone was waiting for him outside. Well, then, I said. Tell me just one little thing before you go. Did you take my letter from the table by the door? Then, in that same second, I saw the terrible face of Peter Quint at the window again. The room changed, and everything felt bad. But Miles saw nothing. Yes, I took it, he said. I took him in my arms. He could not see the ghost, and he was not lying now. These were two good, good things. The face still stared at us through the glass. Why did you take it? I wanted to know what you wrote about me, he said. And did you open the letter? I asked. I opened it, and then I burnt it, he said. And did you do this at school? Did you steal letters and burn them? 
Did you steal other things, Miles? Me? He asked. Steal? His voice told me that this was a terrible question. My face was red. Well, why can't you go back? What did you do, then? I, I said things, the boy replied, to a few people. And then all the masters heard about it. That's all. What things? I asked. But he didn't say. Perhaps he really was innocent. Didn't they tell you? Well, there were some bad things. Perhaps they were too bad for a letter. But the face at the window came closer. It wanted to stop Miles, to stop his true answers. I screamed and held Miles again. No more, no more. I shouted to the ghost. Is she here? Miles asked and turned his eyes to the window. But he could still see nothing. She? I asked. Miss Jessel, Miss Jessel, he shouted in anger. I understood then, he was thinking about Flora's story. No, it's not Miss Jessel. But that other dreadful face, that wicked man, he's at the window for the last time. He got angrier then, and the room felt worse. He is here then? He asked. Who? I had to ask him. Peter Quint, of course. Where is he? He looked round the room. Where? It doesn't matter. I said. I have you now. You are mine not his. He has lost you forever. There, there. I pointed. But Miles saw nothing. He screamed like an animal, like a person who has lost everything. He's falling. I thought. I must catch him and save him. I held him hard, very hard. And then Miles and I were alone, alone together in a quiet afternoon. But suddenly, his little heart stopped, and I realized what I was holding. I was holding a dead child, not a living one. The End <laughs>